All right, welcome everyone to the KCP community meeting on this Thursday, as always. Um, before we get started, a little bit of housekeeping as always. Um, this meeting is governed by the CNCF Code of Conduct, uh, which boils down to let's be excellent to each other. Um, so let's just be excellent to each other. Um, with that said, I don't believe there are new attendees. Um, so I don't think I have to ask for any introductions. Um, and we only have one topic on the agenda. So I would just get started with my topic. Um, we've been working a little bit on, and I, there was a, like, let me give a little bit of background. There was a Slack thread a couple, I think two weeks ago or so, where I asked about um, a KCP operator if that would be of interest. Um, the background behind that is that well, the KCP setup can be quite complex, especially if you're going multi-shard um, and like keeping it alive and all of that and keeping it in sync, I think can be quite challenging. Um, so for advanced life cycle of a KCP setup, um, it would make sense to have a dedicated operator that does that. Um, I think there was like relatively universal agreement, like a loose consensus on that on the Slack thread. So um, we went ahead and created the repository. So there's now a KCP operator repository in the GitHub organization. And basically what I wanted to briefly show everyone here is just so that I get things right from the beginning. Um, I've been thinking about the initial design of CADs for this operator. Um, and basically how they relate to each other. And that heavily is tied to your understanding um, of the real architecture of a KCP setup, especially a multi-shard one. So I basically just wanted to see if I'm right with this. Um, so don't take that long. So I think we're gonna have a quick meeting unless someone else has topics for the open floor. Uh, but what I wanted to show you basically, and please interrupt me, um, I'm, I'm just doing my monologue here, but if you want to talk about something, um, just let, just interrupt me. Um, so basically the idea that I had is that there will be the need for a couple of CRDs. Um, the kind of core CRD um, is something that I call the root chart. That's like the nucleus of a KCP setup. Like you always need a, one KCP instance that is the root chart that starts your whole KCP setup. Um, so this kind of sitting, well, I can't move this, but this is kind of sitting in the center of everything. Um, the cache server is often, I think, run as embedded at the moment, but strictly speaking, it's a dedicated component. So um, you kind of need to start the cache server even before the root chart. At least that is my understanding. Um, and someone please correct me on, on this if I'm being wrong. So the cache server is a, okay, great. Um, so the cache server is a requirement for the root chart. So basically you have a root chart and well, you have exactly one per KCP kind of setup. Um, it needs like one, or I think, I'm not sure if this is implemented yet, one or multiple cache servers that the different charts then can use. Um, so basically, um, you start with a cache server, then you create a root chart, and then you create like one or multiple installations of the front proxy. Uh, uh, good question, um, MJ. The, the reason, I'll just read it from chat quickly so everyone. So why not make shard type root versus two type of shard objects? My idea was that basically you need to differentiate them because shards need to like reference the like their 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 starting point. And I I felt that root shards are different than shards because you can have many shards, but you can only have one root chart. Um, and I wanted to express that in the CD relationships. I'm not sure if that makes sense. But that was my my thought behind it. I think that's the thing that's most debatable, even to me. 
like if it's one or two objects, they will have a rather big API overlay. So maybe it just makes sense to uh, to change that. Um, the the basically the idea was that a shard needs to reference a root shard that it well connects to, um, that it forms a multi shard setup with, and if it's a field within the shard, then any like validation logic needs to look into the referenced object. And I think that's usually not something. Um, um, okay, I'm, I'm I'm not sure if I if I got that that comment, MJ. But uh, okay, um, but yeah, the, I think this one is the one that's most in flux. Um, but basically, well, you can also have a front proxy. Well, one or multiple um, that basically load traffic into your KCP setup. Um, and these can be in different regions and all because also they're stateless. Um, and then I also added kind of a helper CRD cube config, which will help generating cube configs to either talk to a shard or talk to a root shard or talk to the front proxy. Um, that is kind of what I had in mind with the CRDs for the KCP operator. And, you know, we're starting early. I just, like, basically scaffolded the Cube Builder project for it. Um, like, we're going to be able to change the APIs for a while. So this is not set in stone. Um, but this is my understanding of the relations. Um, uh, this, this is my my my... my like idea of the relations between the CIDs. Uh, regarding your question, uh, MJ, certificates shared between shards out of scope or idea how. Um, so I've been thinking about this uh, a little bit. So, so one of the things that can happen is that you want your KCP setup to, uh, to, to be across multiple Kubernetes clusters, because that is kind of the idea behind KCP you have a global control plane. So that means you have maybe a shard in Europe, you have a shard in the US, um, and well, they form one KCP cluster, but they are running on different Kubernetes clusters. Um, so one of the ideas that I had was that potentially a lot of these CRDs basically can output a config map or secret that includes all the information that would need to that you would need to basically join the KCP setup, and then this, these secrets, these kind of I don't know, I don't know how to call them join secrets or something, and also the certificates what MJ has, so the the TLS certificates that need to be shared, they could then be synced between the clusters. For now, I consider the actual syncing to be uh, out of scope for the operator because there are existing tools for that. And I'm not sure we should impose that, maybe an optional component, I don't know. Um, but my idea would be that we we operate under the assumption that something can be multi-cluster um, in the design, but we don't define how a secret uh, goes from one cluster to the other. I'm not sure if that makes sense. Okay, all right. Yeah, I, I think I would for now maybe keep an integration with Set Manager, to be honest, for just like creating all the certificates, the syncing part again, like maybe might be out of scope. Okay, before I talk even more, any thoughts on this from, from anyone else? Simon, you have your hand up. Yeah, I, I have a question. Um, I'm assuming this operator would also deploy KCP, like create a deployment. Yeah, sorry, that 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 maybe I should have made that clear. Yes, that's the whole idea of, of the operator. Yeah. Um, and then then now with this my my actual question now comes comes in, um, because we mentioned that like multi cluster is a big thing. Will that be also mean that it can deploy it into multiple clusters already, or is it? You just said later down the road, multi-cluster will be the big thing. I'm trying to understand where this 
proposal fits in at this moment in time. Yeah, I, I wrote a little bit of notes about this. I can I can share them uh, once like we have the repro setup finalized. We're currently hitting some core issues. I'm working on that with Christoph. Um, I I would build the integration points for like a multi Kubernetes cluster thing, but I would maybe not like completely into uh, implement them yet. Uh, MJ, you have your hand up. Yeah, I, I will use my small quota of voice. <laughs> you can also text. That's not a problem. Yeah. Now I think like the two things that, as I mentioned, certificates are a big part, but as you rightly mention we should not impose how we do that we should create a plug points same goes for multi-cluster one example shard to shard we need to have a back channel communication directly via some vpn tunnel or something where front proxies outside which gives a hint to some kind of vpn mesh or service mesh or something like that which it's kind of out of scope too i think but we need to define how one brings something in, basically. Give give a few opinions how people could do that thing over, basically. Not to try to solve multi-cluster networking for them because this is a can of worm. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That, that, that's not the business we're in. Um, the integration points that I mentioned, maybe to explain them a little bit, my idea was basically that, so let's say you create a root chart on cluster A. Um, and then you want to say, okay, I want to run another shard, but it should be on cluster B. And now both, uh, sorry, now both cluster A and cluster B, they're running the KCP operator. And on cluster B, I want to be able to create a shard object. object. And instead of referencing a root shard object, because that is obviously not existing on cluster B, that object is in the cluster A Kubernetes API, you could maybe also reference a config map or a secret that got synced from cluster A to cluster B. And that would include all the like necessary information to, to start a connection. That would still mean that the clusters would need to be meshed in some way, as MJ said. Um, but these are the possible integration points I see in the operator. But we're not like I just want us. Or I want the CD to be flexible enough to 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 allow this. Um, but it's not something that I would build into it in the first iteration. Does that answer your question, Simon? Yeah, fully, fully answer my answers my question. Okay, great. So unless someone sees like big red flags with this architecture, I would just move ahead with it, like prototyping a little bit um, and trying to well, get uh, get the... Uh, yeah, yes, sir. Um, sorry, just one. No, oh, you went on mute. Sorry, I was uh, accidentally typing. Um, what I wanted to say is that um, how different is this then from the Helm chart? So I would have assumed in a very simple approach, um, the operator might simply be deploying the same type of configuration that the Helm chart does. I mean, of course, you have some variables to configure it in there, or is this really a bit more flexible than that? And what was the reasons to decide to go a little bit more configuration there? You know what I mean, Marvin? Yeah, so um, I, I think the what what the operator will be capable of doing, what the Helm chart is not or might not be able to to do, is the ability to dynamically discover information from like referenced object and all that. So you like basically all you need to do is when you create a new shard, you just need to give it like your name and maybe some config options, like I don't know how big should the deployment be or something. And then you give it a root, like an object reference, and it automatic, like the operator makes sure that it automatically discovers all the relevant information from the root charts, um, or from the like how do like which which cache service, uh, for example, is configured in the root chart. Should I be talking to that? Should I be talking to another uh, cache server? Uh, similar with the front proxy. So the front proxy 
could be dynamically configured based on what is in this object, but also what is in that object, and maybe even what is in these objects. So okay. through this like transitive relationship, the front proxy implementation uh, would know like which shards exist dynamically. So, so you're saying that if there are parts of these components existing already, maybe can reuse them and then essentially point to those. I mean, so the, the 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 operator like will like deploy all these components from the KCP image, right? It's it's not like we implementing the front proxy, but basically it's implementing a like life cycle management for front proxy deployments. And the helm chart is well, basically you you install it, and at some point you upgrade it. But like life cycling is very limited. You probably need to update the values and then need to like deploy the chart again and all that. That's rather cumbersome in my opinion okay thanks for explaining Cheers, man. all right any any other notes but yeah i agree mj once there is like a prototype i will i will scaffold um i will open a pr with the scaffolding in cube build or with cube builder hopefully soonish in the next few weeks once we have the power problem sorted out and then i can send that for like lazy consensus and see if anyone has any thoughts. Okay. That is actually it from the agenda. Um, however, of course, as always, we have like the any other business and open floor. So is there any other topic that you would like to discuss today? Luke, I come. Hey, thank you. Um, so yeah, I, I thought I'd introduce myself and also maybe ask for um, any resources at the level in which I'm currently um, uh, working through KCP. But just just quickly, um, I work at um, Capital One, a large bank, and we right now something that I've been kind of working through on the side is just better managing very large platforms and systems um, such as, you know, uh, checking account, banking account, thousands of services um, and capabilities that go into supporting that and trying to better organize um, in a multi-tenant environment the, the boundaries of a system of that size down to the specific APIs and the hierarchical kind of constructs of APIs that are required within a system of that size. Um, so I, I think where where I am today, I'm still very much at a higher level. Um, I've, I've been an engineer for 20 years, 20 plus years, but my Kubernetes, I'm still a, um, um, definitely not my uh, background. So I'm coming up to speed there, but really more focusing in on the best way to solve kind of our business needs with the logical model of, of API resources and workspaces to solve, you know, starting with more of an end-to-end -end testing and a developer persona um than, than a higher level platform owner but all that to say i guess what what would help me and 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 i've even thought of some of the documentation that i've noticed on the the tenancy is i think a, a bit out of date and i'm happy to contribute some of that back as i work through my own examples but um you know recently the ml um uh, project that was demoed at the qcon 2024 in paris was very helpful a anything else out there like that that might just help me stretch the boundaries of my understanding of how people are using um, using KCP uh, to organize large systems and solutions in a way that's that's you know resonates with the business and how we think about you know products and, and large platforms so hopefully that makes sense but um, just still learning and, and happy to be here and, and really appreciate all the work that you guys are doing on KCP first of all it's great to have you here thank you for the kind words um all right uh so regarding your question i i think what you're looking for is more case studies is that right that that yes exactly um I, you know as i work through i've got a a small example of what would go into a specific banking product and i've i've worked through the meta model in an architectural sense and now i'm trying to apply that to best how to organize exports resources and workspaces. So yeah, I think it really is trying to just anything else out there that can kind of make me more proficient from a case study perspective would be incredibly helpful. 
Okay, yeah, I, I, I think right now we're a little bit short on that. I think uh, the talk that you've seen was a very good introduction to that. Um, I'm not sure if you will have the uh, the uh, like possibility to attend KubeCon and CloudNativeCon next week in North America. Um, if Unfortunately, I'm not, but we will have someone else there. Um, so I, I will have them reach out if you guys will be there. And and then I think the other piece would be is I don't know if this is, I would be interested and I, I'm not, this isn't, I, I would have to go through approvals and helping with a case study based on our, our use case. We do have Kubernetes experts and folks that will glom onto this much more quickly than maybe I have based on my experience. Um, but also, I don't know if you guys ever have offer kind of just time to, 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 to talk more specifically about my use case and just give me some feedback on how to best be successful with that consulting wise. I mean, I think in, in general, like feel free to just drop your questions in the Slack channel. Um, if, regarding consulting, I think some of the like organizations hosting KCP would be possibly interested in that. Um, but I don't think we can like make any commitments on on the community call. Gotcha. Um, yeah, I think I think the community aspect of it would be great as long as um, people don't mind asking very noob questions <laughs> as I work through how to apply this best in our environment. No, no, I, I think honestly, like this meeting is a uh, is a perfectly fine place for that. Um, since we record it, that means like a lot of people that might also be new would like benefit from you asking these questions. And we're very happy to, to help out. So great. Thank you. Uh, and, and just because I mentioned the KubeCon thing, um, I think there's like there are um, a couple talks. Um, so for example, MJ who's on the call here has one that does uh, like a technical deep dive. But there's an interesting one maybe regarding sort of case studies. So um, there's a talk about integrating Slurm with Kubernetes, and that is based, as far as we know, on KCP. Um, and since that talk is given by someone from NVIDIA, I would assume that they have scales that would, you know, uh, kind of hit what, what you're looking for. So I don't know the contents of that talk. Um, I think recordings are now these days with KubeCon pretty uh, online pretty pretty soon. Um, so maybe that's an interesting talk to review once it's available on YouTube. Great. Yeah, I'll definitely, I'll definitely look for that. I can also briefly show you the link. We have a kind of a schedule blog post. Um, so there's the link to the talk in there as well. Okay, great. Um, so yeah, look, feel free to to like organize your questions, put them on the on the Slack channel. Also, bring them here. Like, we're very happy for that. Um, if you want to, you can add them like to the uh, to the meeting minutes beforehand. Everyone is welcome to add the topics there. Great. Yeah, maybe I'll try to put together something that is a little more generic, but still speaks to the scope of what I'm doing, so I don't divulge too much that I'm not supposed to. But but I'll. Uh... I'll definitely come up with a use case and post it. Thank you for the opportunity. All right, great. Awesome. I'm looking forward to that. OK. Do we have any other topics regarding open floor? Does anyone have something that they want to talk about? That seems to be a no. In that case, thank you all very much and enjoy the rest of your day. See you soon. And enjoy KubeCon if you're there. Bye bye. Thank, thank you. Bye bye.